one of the many machines and probably the largest machine making its debut at Agritechnica this year is the Nexat gantry system, a colossal machine standing right behind us. This is Hannah Overlay and she's going to tell us a little bit about Nexat and sort of where it all came from. Yeah, sure. So um, this is the first time we're presenting Nexat at a, at a fair um, in Germany at the Agritechnica fair. Um, the next one was developed by Clemens Kalverkamp and his son Felix Kalverkamp. Right. They, in 2015, they asked themselves, what will agriculture or crop production look like in 10 years? Right. Um, yeah, so they, they thought, okay, machines will be bigger because we, we, need, to, we need high throughputs. Um, but what we need to solve is the issue of compaction. Because with these big machines, you're compacting your soil, you're compacting the zone where your crop grows. Exactly. So, yeah, and as you said before, the gantry vehicle is not new. Um, so they, they picked up, let's say, the idea of the gantry again. And in that time, um, the gantry was not really successful because there were several factors not making, working successful. One thing was the GPS system was not there. So it was not easy to drive on exact tracks again. Right. It's soft nowadays. We're working with RTK, so up to two centimeters precise Actually, driving on the, on the lanes. Um, the implements, or yeah, how we call it, the implements for the different applications, in the 60s were not really there for that wide scale, so sowing technique, combine harvesting, etc. Nowadays, all the implements are, are available on this kind of scale. Um, so you're yeah. saying, right, so now then, you know, I, I, there was, in the, Britain, there was a thing called the Dowler Gantry many, many years yeah, ago, correct. which wasn't, like you say, it wasn't, it's, I mean, this thing's way bigger. Yeah, but too. it's technology that's basically allowed any of this to happen, really, isn't it? Because yeah, about correct. that technology and the guidance and correct. the automation and all the things that we take correct. sort of for granted yeah. now, correct. this really wouldn't have happened at all, would it? Yeah, correct. And that's what makes this vehicle successful now. So, you said to me before we started, you said that this is the serial harvesting model, yeah, yeah? Yeah, it's actually the serial model of the Nexat, so the carrier vehicle yeah, yeah. is what we see here. Yes. Of this one, we will have produced 12 in, until the end of the year. Right. Um, yeah, and it's, it's here presented with the combine harvester, mm -hmm. which is developed in-house by us, by Nexat. And then the other implements, which you can also see in the videos, um, are developed by, co we call them cooperation partners. You see the names on the left of the booth. Right, yes. Um, so they developed, like Federstad was one of the first developing for us sewing technology, seeding technology, a carrier disc harrow. Um, then several companies developing headers for our combine harvester, also very known companies in the market, Geringhoff, Macdon, GTS, Franco Fabril, a specialist in sunflower headers. Right. Yeah. So the, the basic platform then, explain to me how that works. You've got the, the carrier vehicle. Correct. Two engines. Am, yes. I, am I right? Just yeah, got two, two engines. Yeah, two leap air engines of 550 horsepower. So we've got a lot of power there. Yeah, We've got 1100 horsepower yes, to play with. Yes, indeed. Uh, it, one engine that drives the wheels, one in, how does that work? Why, why the two engines? No, how does the, that work? The two engines actually power an electric generator, which then power, so at each wheel is driven, um, so single wheel drive, uh, sorry, I'm yeah, missing yeah, the word, um, single wheel drive, and on each wheel you, you have an electric motor of 220 horsepower. Right, and so it's like a locomotive, like a train, so two engines yeah, drive electric and it drives a wheel. Yeah, correct, oh, yeah. correct. So the, it, the wheels are steered with uh, electric power. Well, no kidding. So let's say in the future, of course, this diesel engine can be replaced by another energy source. Let's think hydrogen, green yeah. hydrogen, yeah. So it's not, we're already thinking ahead then. So right now you're running diesel engines on it, yeah. but you're already thinking ahead that we could, it'd be easy thing to put yeah. hydrogen motors yeah. on it in the future. So yeah. like of course you have to think, I mean, you have to think that way. Yeah. Well, it's, yeah. it, well I, I, and of course it's, it's already a hybrid. It's the oldest hybrid design in the world. You know, diesel driving, ele gen yeah. electric generator, yeah. it's good. So the operator sits up there. Correct. And that cab can go, I assume it can go up, down, yeah. forward, turn it can, around. It can swivel with 270 degrees. So while, of course, it, the, the machine drives on the fixed tracks in the field. So also while driving, you can, let's say, swivel yourself back in the cabin, look at the back, see what you've sewn, and yeah, just look how the machine works. So the fundamental inspiration, where we come there, is controlled traffic. Correct. 
And that, so you, you, you're basically getting rid of your conventional tram line system. Yes, indeed. And you're, you've got control traffic and the, the machine yeah. Yeah. next to that drives up the same wheel marks all year, all year. every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And let's say what, what is the advantage of Nexat compared with um, other control traffic farming is that we use the so-called widespan control traffic farming. So the wheels are outside, yeah. meaning you drive every lane twice, every track which you use. Well, in standard control traffic farming, you're in the middle yeah. with the implement, like the applications on the outside of you, meaning every track is only once. And in the Nexat system, of course, if you go back, you use the same track again. Oh right, so the, basically the one wheel got, stays on the same track up yeah, and down correct, the field. Correct, so you're having the, the share of tracks in your field. So you're like halving the number of tracks, yeah, wheel correct. marks in the field. Yeah, yeah, correct. And they're further apart. Yeah, correct, with. correct. So you really are significantly reducing the amount yeah. of travel lanes, yeah, if you yeah, like. Yeah, indeed, in an optimum, let's say, condition, you can do the math at 40 meters, 75 centimeters uh, wheels, you can reduce the track share to up to 5%. Now, one thing about it that is obviously, the first thing you see is it's freaking colossal. Yeah. And it's obviously heavy. Yeah, that's so, true. So, you know, we're, we're reducing compactness by eliminating wheel marks and stuff. But how does it, what sort of weight are we talking about on those tracks? I mean, it, 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 it's, yeah. it's still putting some ground pressure yeah. down, surely. We are, it's comparable to large scale, let's say, harvesting technology. I don't know the exact weight, um, but let's say what the thing is, the weight is not such a thing anymore as you're driving in the fixed tracks. So the compaction, where your crop grows, you don't have any compaction. You're not driving over that zone anymore. So the crop, let's say the soil structure, becomes a total different one. It becomes natural. The, the root growth is promoted because the, the crop, let's say, doesn't have to fight with its roots right. against the compacted soil. So, yeah. Go ahead. So if, if that, sorry to interrupt you there, but I just had a, a brainwave, well not brainwave, yeah. I've never had a brainwave in my life. Sure. But I've, I've just had a thought. So if you're doing this and you could technically, would you put in permanent wheel marks so that you would, so that you wouldn't sink in the ground at all? Do you understand what I'm saying? So you'd make like, there's a wheel mark and we'd put that one in permanently and maybe put a stone or hardcore, it will make it a permanent track. Is that something that you would do or not? Uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure if we're working on that. But what's for sure, I think, is it's key to manage your tracks to make sure that you... Because what we want to do is, of course, enable like as long or at the possibility to drive over your tracks um, at any time in the year, yeah. like, even in wet conditions. Well, that's, that was and what I was thinking yeah, exactly, in terms but, of... But we, we have several options there. We're investigating also more and more options, also plant, planting something different in the tracks. Uh, we have on the carrier, like our disc harrow, mm -hmm. outside disc, which are shoveling soil in the tracks so you, you don't sink in with your tracks. Right. But they're, so you